This is not a discussion I think that particularly lends itself well to data. Players are playing longer, okay, fine. They're also playing, you know, guys are taking off years and half years. If you're only playing 70% of a season, yeah, you'll get some years on the back end. But we haven't even really defined what an injury is. My point on all of this is this is not okay. And clearly what, what is this? Here. What is this? The number what, of players this. the number of players define who cannot I'll, let, here I'll define it. The number of players who cannot complete a season without some sort of compromised physical state. It's not just the guys at the top of the game. I mean, literally go through a draw and note how many players have not been able to finish one of the last five seasons on account of injury. And me I'm, I'm going to stop you for one second, and let's look at – I don't have this data prepared because I didn't know this was going to be your tactic. No, no, I'm – you want data. <laughs> I don't want – I don't want data. I don't want – I don't want – I don't want data. What I want is for someone to say, How this facts? is not okay. like facts? Let us investigate this. Let, what is going on here? Let, let me give you some a, facts, John. Let's look at the amount of tournaments that players were playing – back when and I played and Justin played back 15 years ago compared to today. If you look it up on the website, it's right there for you. Players play more tournament weeks than they did back then. Look at the top 100 average amount of tournaments of the field players. If we look at the players at the top of the game, they're actually playing less, believe it or not, than the top players. This graphic is a year in number ones, the workload comps. Less tournaments for Murray and Djokovic than Leighton Hewitt and Edberg, Sampras, all these guys. Are they playing similar matches? Yeah, if they have great seasons, these are the best players in the world. But they're not playing as heavy of a schedule as they even did before. But the rank and file players are. And you know why? But this, this but that, I mean, that's a whole job. But, but I think that's some dirty data right there. I mean, look at dirty my, data. Look at dirty? Miles Travel. Hold on, wait, 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 let's reframe the argument. In the in the point, let's look at transitions from one surface to another. I traveled but the look, world. Look at what happened no in the course of those points. I mean, we always talk about how physical it is. Point. Look how many more balls are. You want to talk about how physical it is? Who is more physical than this guy? When did your arm give out? When did your When did your arm start bothering? When did you have dead arm? Balls being struck. Twenty-seven years old. His arm started bothering. I'm going. I'm going to do Hold something on, really on. weird. I'm going to agree with you that there's no question that the game is more physical today in the points. If you have to slide on a hard court just to stay in a point, something we didn't have to do, you're doing that because you don't have time to get back into position otherwise. So there's no doubt that it, the game within the points is more physical. But what I am doubting is that we have an injury epidemic, something you write about all the time. I'm calling you on that. Let's, I don't think just that's the case. Let's say we, we spent so much time on shot clocks and 20 seconds versus 25 seconds. We have an entire cohort of players, not just at the top. I asked Tanaki Kokonaka, but literally go look in that locker room. We have an existential issue with players not able to complete a season. And the amount of time that's devoted to 25 seconds versus 20 seconds and lets and But, no John, less. the numbers don't support that. I mean, the, the, number, the total amount of injuries don't support what you're saying. They we, don't we support that. We haven't what an injury is. But we have guys here competed who had no expectation of winning because they came for $50,000. They're not going to be on any data sheet. But that has always injury. happened. Right, but hang, hang on. Let, let's let's put just, it in a money context because if we're looking for a reason of why these guys, as you pointed out with your data, are playing later into their careers and the average age on tour is four years older, always follow the money, right? Uh, the money is bigger and more enticing than it was years ago. Absolute correlation. If you look on the right-hand side of your screen, players over 30, it, it falls in lockstep with the prize money increases, especially the first round prize money. Because remember, the bulk of these players over 30 playing right now, well, they're, they're top 100 players, first of all. But yes, some of them are at the top, but a lot of them are playing because this is more money than they can make away from the tour. Back in 1991, when 6,000 was your first round prize money, 1996 at 10,000, guys and gals could leave the tour, go be club professionals and make a similar living with a much lighter travel schedule. And you gotta remember, when you're 30 years and over, now you're getting into the family time of your right. lifestyle, right? So now the incentives to, be your, to continue to be your own boss, have a wonderful life and make gobs of money are out there if you're a top 100 player because of the work that Justin did on behalf of the players to get the prize money increase. But you say there are more injuries. I talked to Clay Snipeman, an ATP trainer in the Math. locker room yesterday. Math doesn't lie. But we're going to put some graphics up that are going to show facts that the ATP has put out. It shows the registered injuries in, in the last couple of seasons are up 3%. I would hardly call that an epidemic. Injuries this year compared to last year from January to Cincinnati are actually down 6.5%. And look at all the players in the top 100. Clay was very adamant about, look, 
The reality is we're dealing with older bodies. It's wear and tear. And don't just ask Clay. Go listen to tape of Rafa and Roger in the pre-US Open press conferences saying it's totally normal that players that are older are getting injured. So, I mean, I think there's there's You can't have it both ways. Oh, you can't logic, have it both ways. Right? You can't be so happy that guys are playing longer. And exactly. playing when they're older, That's my right? But then right. also, but of course, there's a direct correlation of playing longer. There's well, miles on the, the odometer; side, their bodies we, are beaten down. How do we have these guys go 11 months a year? They're all taking time off. I, I just think, dude, that Roger Federer, we have six years old. He's Roger the favorite Federer, at the U.S. Roger Open. Roger Federer, Federer, if you were told a couple, five of the last John, come on, if you were told a couple years ago that Nadal would be back at number one in the world, you guys were all saying Rafa Nadal is going to need a tourniquet. It's going to be Monty Python. His arm's going to fall. How many years? He's going to fall. Andy Roddick. I mean, how many times did John McEnroe say that his arms? Fall off the Justin, big, all right, larger Look point. I mean, we, we can cherry pick our examples. How many years of Rafa Nadal not played all for? I mean, we can cherry pick. Here's my point. How many years did Andre Agassi take off? Wait, wait, you're Here, macro point. Are you okay with this? I mean, don't yes. you think we ought to okay be investigating the source? Is it season two? I mean, everyone has an answer, right? Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal says the balls are different. That's that's confusing. Well, that's things. factual. No, I have, I'm I have saying, one, one are you final okay? point. Are you okay with this? Are you are you okay with the rate? Am I okay with players being hurt and not being able to play? Yeah. Obviously where, not, where but I'm the, very happy imagine, that Rafa Nadal's number one in the world game. Roger another Feather's 36, sport, and bring, he's still the favorite. Right, bring us home here. I, I think the final point here is, is no one wants to see players injured, John, and, and we're not trying to gang up on you here. What, what we're doing is trying to lay out the facts on the ground. The ATP since 2006 has had a injury prevention plan in place for the players where three times of the year they can see specialists and they can see where, what their areas of weakness are that may get injured later on. So they've had a, play, a plan in place for over a decade now that the players are free to use. They're not obligated to use it. It's their choice. They're, they're independent operators. But I don't agree that there's an epidemic. Clearly, I've made that, that clear. And I don't agree that the tour is doing nothing about it. I do agree that the game is way more physical than it's ever been. And I, and I also agree that the players are going to continue to play longer as long as the money is there. So those are my bullet points. I rest my case. You did a great yeah, job. The money, I mean, the Courier also, did a great I mean, job. The money also enables you to have a staff and a nutritionist. I mean, the, na the money also, it's not just opportunity costs. The, the money also enables you to prolong your career. My point on all this is there are an awful lot of players who are walking around physically compromised and for all the amount of time this sport spends on lets and no lets and size of sponsor patches and agents and commitments this is a pretty big issue that seems to just kind of be passed off that's guess, my point i guess my that's points my point. made no impact on john we're still well that's we the definition no, of a great debate when two people go at it head to head and nobody changed their mind <laughs>